Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Turned Into Punk Classics, a show where we take old episodes of Turned Into Punk that have been lost from the internet and return them to their previous glory by sticking them back on the feed. You can find this podcast on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and all other forms of social media. Well, that's pretty much it. At Turned Into Punk, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Damien. I play in a band. More information can be found at F U C K E D U P dot C C. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy another TOAP classic. In Coliseum, the young skinny kid, I think he ended up being in Trap Them. Oh, Christian, Christian, I can't remember his fucking name. But I had put together this super group. But really? Have this, it was going to just be a fucking weirdo, Melvin Z heavy hardcore band. But it was going to have Steve singing, me playing guitar, this drummer from... Coliseum trap, like yeah, and um, and maybe get like Andrew from Against Me or just it's something where it's like we don't tour, <laughs> we just do we it. We pass the tracks or however you do that shit, but just yeah, I was like oh, because I was because Ray got back together like two years ago for the Antenna reunion. Yeah, I saw that, and I was out of town, which I was almost glad I was out of town because <laughs> those reunions scare the shit out of me. Like because the picture of them afterwards was all a bunch of middle aged dudes wearing. I say dad jeans. It's like the weird acid wash flare, like in black shirts. Nobody wore black shirts when we were a kid. It was all white oversized, but now everybody's fat. You know, it's just that whole. You have to just grow up in the fat. Fucking yeah. sweaty. And just like, I was like, God, I bet you that was so embarrassing. You know, just they're yeah. like, because I still, I was listening to it the other day. It's like Fist Bite in the Parking Lot, that uh, Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just, it just, oh, but it was so funny. Because. They wanted me to play guitar because they don't talk to Jason Van Auken anymore. Yeah. And, um, or he got really weird, lives in Atlanta, and he didn't know if it was cool or not. But they were like, Brian, I was like, man, if I wasn't touring, <sighs> fuck yeah, we just, I'd learn all, you know, like, I should just know him anyway. Well, before we find out if your heart does bleed green blood, <laughs> Brian, I got to start at the very beginning. All right. Which is, where did it all begin for you? How'd you get into punk? Oh, the first man. time you ever came across it? Ah, oh. First time ever. I mean, it was high school. I think, I, I want to say in eighth grade, I saw Black Flag sticker or Circle Jerks and didn't know what it was. Yeah. But it was, you know. and then, The icon. Yeah, you're just like, oh, okay, I've never, you know, Sex Pistols. Some, yeah, somebody yeah. right when you're just like, uh, all right. <laughs> and then, this is a weird thing. My family's shoe repairman. We're family okay. business is shoe repair. So I pick up on shoes quicker. I will judge you for your shoes. You've been to the Baddest Shoe Museum down the street? The what shoe museum? Oh my gosh. You are <laughs> literally seven seven blocks, ten blocks from the Baddest Shoe Museum. A giant shoe museum. Like large yeah. shoes or a large, large amount no, of shoes? No, no, like a large amount of shoes. They have special exhibits oh. from all centuries. Like Shit. I know, That's and it, it definitely will be closed. Ah, come, we'll come back. Yeah, but you, you come back. I got to go there with you. One anyway, the, yeah, sorry, No, that would be amazing. Um, one of the things I started noticing was the vans. Mm -hmm. Like, you'd never, I'd never seen them. You'd seen the New Balance. You'd seen the treat. You know, like, you're just, there's a thing you pick up on. Yeah. You'd also see weird people. You know, it's like, oh, the jean-jacketed weirdo guys are wearing... Shoes, but I think I mean it was skateboarding. Really, it was in small not small engines, uh, wood shop. I had two skateboarder kids. One was in my homeroom. He drummed for a local band called Southern Consequences. He was way too young. Did they do a they did a record? They did two seven inches. Two seven inches, and yeah. there's like I've got Sobering Consequence seven inch in my house. I mean, is it uh, got the tree, it's a tree on, on it? it. Yeah. yeah, and there's also a zine associated with it too, right? Tr like um, self defense. Self not self defense. It's um. Oh, hellfire. Because it was Marvin, all them. And they put out the first... They put out, like, the first... Two uh, seven inches of me in a zine? Well, I want to say, well... Oh, what is the name of that damn zine? Because it was the guys from Pez, Marvin... See, I see. Marvin Nick put out a zine. They put out the first Connor Cry seven inch before very small yeah. picked it up. Yeah, oh my gosh. We are... And, oh, we're getting on so, so much shit I want to talk about <laughs> right now. But, um... They did a mix that had Sobering on it. They didn't put out the Sobering. Okay, they didn't put out the okay. Sobering. put it out themselves. The first one has all of them on the cover. Okay, it's I don't blue. have that one. I have the tree one. Yeah, the tree one is... God, I'm going to get so much... This is a problem. It's like shit talking. <laughs> You're not shit talking. Well, it's just not... My Sobering <laughs> Consequences yeah, that's is a, the demo tape. That's... Yeah, totally and acceptable. that was like... 
you know, and they digitalized it and I had it forever and I lost it and I got to talk to Uncle Roy. He lives in Milwaukee. I'm sure I can get it back from him. Yeah. But the seven inch came out and you're like, okay. And then the second one came out and it's like all things eighties, late eighties, yeah. early nineties. Yeah. Your Gnostic fronts, your uh, TSOL, like anything that just, I say that cause my first punk rock record was a Gnostic front. Um, not victim in pain. The other one, cause for alarm. Cause for alarm and TSOL revenge. Oh yeah, this <laughs> is still a special place in my heart for that revenge record. But it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, I think I think cause for alarm has aged better than revenge. Oh yeah, oh, and yeah. I would say that cause for alarm. Yeah, definitely not my favorite it's, AF record. It's terrible, but that artwork on it, you're like, okay, the artwork's amazing. So, but they did the same thing where they, everybody but Roy, I think, wanted to get new wave. Okay, and it was that time when everybody, I mean, you ninety one. You start playing against Bold did it. Yeah. Everybody did yeah. it. It was like playing better, but you also... And then you read all these things like the Minor Threat stuff where Brian Baker and all them wanted to sound like you too. It yeah. goes back. some point, they're like, New Wave gets you girls. It gets yeah. you record deals. It gets, you know... And there's always that one guy going, <laughs> no. no, stop. We will shut... I will cut my nose off. <laughs> I will like, quit this yeah, We will shut down. And so... Um, but yeah, they're just... The guy was in my homeroom and... Um, I talk a lot. Is there going to be a... No, believe okay, me. Okay. This is the best. Okay. Um, like, you've you've thrown out, like, ten names that I'm just like, damn, I'm going to come back to that. I'm yeah. going to come back to that. Um, so you met these guys, these skateboarder guys. Well, just the one was in my class yeah. and one was in my homeroom. And at some point, I mean, it's... I had a stepdad that was beating my ass. Uh, you know, I had my dad. My mom had stolen me from my dad, basically. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go. My dad... And it was a whole... I'm going through it now. My 13 year old, she's 13, got braces, body image problems, and her mom just left. She yeah. is just texting me today, going, "Have you heard this country death song?" She's just going through my records. The other day, she texted, "Have you ever heard of the Bad Brains?" You know, and I'm just kind of like, <laughs> "Oh yeah." Well, like find new music. Like, there's an all girl punk rock band in Memphis called Knots, yeah. and that's her favorite. Like, I took her to her first show. She had a Cro Mags original '89 tour shirt on. Had no idea what it was. <laughs> was just stoked. That's awesome. And so. And that frame of reference, yeah, I was, I was, you I was, it. I was listening to the Metallica it. stuff. Yeah. You know, I was listening to some Megadeth. Metal. I was already looking for not hair metal. Mm-hmm. And yeah, all of a sudden, they got these kids, and then, and I, you know, I wasn't an indoor kid, but I wasn't an athletic kid. Yeah. So the skateboarding was like, so what you're saying is I can roll around, break shit, <laughs> and be by myself, <laughs> or find these, other, you know, like it just all yeah. fell in, and so. This guy, Chris, made me a mixtape, man. It was the first two Seven Seconds records. It was uh, Flipside Volume 5, 4, DI. I got a problem. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. The, I think it's four. 4. It's got the cartoon. The uh, I, It was on a mixtape. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, I have since went and got it and lost it again yeah. a million times, but it had Beach Bacon Bong out. It had the DI. Johnny's got a problem. He's yeah. out of control. He's got static on the brain. Uh, that's probably their best song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so. Um, or Richard Hung Himself. Is that the other one? By- that is a good one. Richard. That's on the. Um, suburbia, they do that in yeah. suburbia, and that, yeah. So, um, but yeah, so yeah, all of a sudden it was just like, yeah, my mom was buying me. I had bought a record player the year before, like one of those box units with the tapes, the mm-hmm. pre CD, or just where you it's got everything all you need, just plug it in, and go. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I'd been listening to like Cream, Cat Stevens, Bob Marley, and Metallica, just whatever my dad was had been throwing at me before, yeah. and um, my mom was trying to. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, this is all mine. Yeah. You were still getting beat up about it. It was still hard to find. Yeah. And uh, my first 7-inch I ever bought was NOTA's Toy Soldiers. Wow. What an amazing first 7-inch. Bam. And yeah. And I was just like, because the kid down there, eventually there's this kid moved. I had an old friend that we ran around in the woods and just blew shit up. Yeah. And he moved away. But this kid, J.P. Goodwin who has now since become an animal rights activist, like in Congress and all this crazy stuff, but he had the best record collection (laughs) ever. And he did Toxic Shock. Oh, wow. So we would order... He did Toxic Shock? No, no, no. We ordered from him. Oh, okay. No, no, no. no, no. We were 12. Yeah, I was going to be like, what? That's an Arizona. That's crazy. But we would skip school. One of us would always have to skip school to be home once a month. (laughs) <laughs> to get the sign for the records. <laughs> you don't want them left out. You don't. No. You know, and we lived in suburbia. It could have gotten left out, but we just didn't. No, but also just the heat. Just anything. Yeah, you just like don't know. The we records. Just, you know, it was an excuse to be like, okay, I got, <clears throat> mama don't feel good today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Crippled youth on clear. Fuck yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, and so, 
Yeah, I mean, that's my first, you know, straight out, like, when it's, what was it, uh, Gorilla Biscuits, No Front Answer. Those are my first Rev 7 inches. That's awesome. And then my dumbass traded the first one. Or no, I had the second one, it was yellow, and traded it because I was like, it's second print. Nobody wants this. Not realizing at the time that color trumps yeah. number. Yeah. Cause Especially I'm, with Rev stuff. Well, yeah, I had to, Rev is like the weirdest, like, it's like fourth press of the war zone on green. Yeah. It's like people pay thousands of dollars. Well, but at the time, I was yeah, like, no, obviously, exactly. this is Who first. Thought? Who would have thought? Yeah. yeah. We got that chain of strength when it came out on green. Worst record ever. You don't like that record at how, all? How old are you? Uh, 36 uh, now. All right, I'm 44. Okay. So there's, like, all the guys in His Heroes Gone and Cop Out, William, all of them think that is the greatest Rev 7 inch. <laughs> yeah. And all the people that actually, Spirit of 88 <laughs> there, yeah. and all that are, like, it's poorly recorded. Frosty was a fucking alcoholic. Like, there was just yeah. so many things to it. They were, like, you know. But I think that's it's always the way it is, right? Like, there's, there's stuff now that even I'm seeing come back from... Yeah. 10 years ago, oh, 20 years ago. I had all the Infest stuff. We all had the Infest stuff, and we were like, God, this is awful. You didn't like Infest. I love Infest now. Yeah, okay. But you got to imagine, John, chicka, John, chicka, John, you know, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah crew, oh. and then all of a sudden it's, you know. <laughs> so, so we're, um, like, have you gone back to Chain and reassess that I, was, all, I mean, there's certain, I mean, obviously, the more punk you become, yeah, Sonic. I mean, the best Revelation 7 inch is that Slipknot 7 inch. I love oh that fucking God. Slipknot 7 inch. That I'm is scouring the internet looking for anything else they have done. There's one other song that came out on Revelation 100, a compilation LP they did oh, that's shit. like an unreleased song. Damn. Um, and I mean, it's not on the. I'll find out what it's on. Yeah. And but I guess the story I've always heard is that they were Jordan's weed guys. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, but I'm saying that ended up being. And when it came out, we were like. Like, what the fuck? And then going back, that is the one to me. Oh, yeah. But then you tell people, and they're like looking at your iTunes, like, why do you have Slipknot? And you're like, like shush. Think about, <laughs> how, think about how lucky that band is. They probably don't have to work. How many people have accidentally Actually downloaded bought it? that? Like, thinking it was like, uh, like ah, Slipknot. Yeah, like the new metal Slipknot. Yeah. Like, you know, accidental purchases in the I millions. Mean, they probably, yeah. But it's, but that was the whole thing. It's just, I would, you know, it was a. I was. I secretly loved the replacements. I discovered that record on a vacation, so I had this whole. My best friend was G. R. Smith. Okay. And he was my older, and he we ran around. He loved Sex Pistols and the Doors, and we'd go do adventures and climb roofs. His little brother was my other friend Pritchard, who was straight edge, and we ran like so. I was yeah. The multiple circles, but we would go see all these crazy. You know what was the first show you went to? Like after did you buy? Did you go to a show before you bought the record type thing? Or? Yeah, my first. I mean, it was local stuff. It was. Um, I don't know. I mean, I used. It's, oh. Was the Connor Christ still playing around? Oh man, I was. I was going to shows before Connor Christ. I remember when they were new. What did they start? Eighty eight. I started going to shows in eighty five. No, oh, okay. So but they came out eighty six. Eighty six, eighty. I okay. mean, they were a little rock band. They probably had a demo. Yeah. They were one of those things where it was like, we were in the parking lot, Fletcher was booking shows, and he, Fletcher loved, business-wise, as a promoter, he was smart. Yeah. You mix your bands. Yeah. So it would be Annie Scene and Even Score. <sighs> oh my God, you're getting every one. But, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And so. That sounds like a dream build to me right but now. Right there, but at the time, it These wasn't. not mixed together at all. Yeah. And then he would have, uh, Kind of Christ and Bold came. Yeah. And kind wow. of thing. And it was like, all the guys in Raid were like, Fletcher, what do we have to do to fucking, you know, like, yeah. please. <laughs> Let us play. Let us play. And so, like, I think um, maybe, oh, I mean, maybe it was Trusty and Bolt. If somehow or another they got worked out so that it was the proper straight edge show. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm still somewhere in my boxes of stuff. I still have my refund ticket for Gorilla Biscuits. <laughs> they were supposed to come. There was 500 people crammed in this little ass antenna club. Their van broke down. They didn't call. They didn't do anything. And they ended up passing three towns over. Wow. And when they got back together, I almost was going to dig it up and go to New York, wherever the fuck they were, and be like, this is, y'all owe me a show, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Know? And, um, but like, Bold ended up staying for, um, hey, Ricky. Sorry. Oh, no, bro. Yeah, Bold ended up staying for like a week, and that's where we figured out, like that's where we really kind of got woken up. Like they were listening to Black Sabbath, yeah, probably a minute, probably smoking pot before, and not letting anybody know. Or if they didn't, they were about to be. Yeah, secret token. Yeah, just you know, and they like hung out and went swimming, and like the um, 
oh, the weirdo little, like, because Tom was playing guitar because the guitar player was too young. And then I want to say the bass player had a weird wax feathers idol that he worshipped or something. Like, it was just a whole lot of, like, what the hell <laughs> are you guys doing? Warzone was even crazier. We did not know. Like, you see, Warzone, obviously, they're yeah. just older straight edge guys. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> they show up. We had a really bad skinhead problem because the Confederate hammer skins would come up from Birmingham okay. and fuck with people. Yeah. And then we had this small group of Memphis ones. It was just, it was just for their while, it was like, shit, you might yeah. get your ass handed to you. And their old girlfriends would go out and fuck with people, and then you'd push them, and then there'd be a reason to beat them up. But Warzone, being a skinhead band, not a straight edge band, yeah, like they had to. They were like, "You mind if we smoke in the garage?" I mean, they were like homeless gutter punks that yeah. you know, like stuff we didn't know. Yeah, yeah. And um, contrary to the marketing, yes, it would oh yeah, to believe. it was just like, oh, this is New York hardcore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. The rest of it's Connecticut hardcore, I think. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And um, so they came, and it was the same. Like there was a whole lot of cra- like Memphis. I'm just scatter shot right now. No, it's fine. Please, um, that's, that's what the show is. Memphis. Even anything, I mean, even us and Lucero, any band you want, we're always going to be harder and dirtier than the other bands. I found that definitely to be true. And it's just, it's like, when we scared Meat Jack came to town one time, started playing Born Against covers, because they were just like, we don't know what to make of you guys. <laughs> you know, Good Reddits came in, and we're like, <laughs> one time, we're like, we're hardcore, California hardcore, and the, his heroes gone, had to go on after him, and they were pretty much like, fuck $10 t-shirts, and just... Did the his heroes gone thing? And you saw these California kids like, what the fuck? <laughs> and so for us at the time, especially if his New York was hard, but to me, he also fucked ten dollar t shirts because it's like oh, it at like, the time ten dollar t shirts was ridiculous. Yeah, but now well, it's like, no, oh, yeah, 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 I'm not three. three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How much are you paying to print yeah. these? Where yeah. are you getting them done at? No, but you're right. Uh, it, it is like a different. Well, every just, band you mentioned, and it's like we could talk, like like. From Jay to to you guys Man. to like to you know there's like so much like to to uh, all that it's a harder edged well it's just cr- I mean and it's I mean like Ray Pure Blood I mean all that Ray, stuff yeah you know I mean that was the whole thing is when Old did come I think they covered uh, Nail to the X or whatever and we went crazy yeah and you could literally oh Purcell was playing that's who was playing guitar it wasn't Tom it was Purcell uh-huh. and um. I think that's why they did it. That was the whole, like, yeah. we can throw in a little extra, or I don't know what it was, but we, I mean, we were almost, we were, it just, but you could see the, like, oh, these fucking rednecks just went batshit crazy, <laughs> you know? But, I mean, even Pez, for pop punk, it's dirtier yeah. and rougher. Yeah. It's just. And, you know, Pez has a, a real strong connection to this city. I don't even know how. Because Pez did a split with Two Line Filler. Oh. Featuring members of Chokehold. <laughs> So I guess there is kind of like a Ray Chokel connection to yeah. it. Yeah, well, and it's just, you know, that was, I mean, it was the other night, taking my uh, daughter Avery to the, her first show. Yeah. Knots, but there were two, I want to say they were from here, but they were like girl-fronted punk rock. They wore outfits. You're going to ask me their names, and I'm blanking it right now. Okay. But they shared the same members. They had freaking cassettes. I was like, why are you going to travel to another country? With cassette, and cassettes not even, are back. I know, but she was my thirteen year old was like, what the "Hell is this?" I was yeah. like, "If you're gonna sell cassettes, I get it. It's it's cool. Put a fucking download code in there." Yeah, you know, they nobody knows what I don't have a cassette player. I think I think that that's what I wonder. I'm like, is there been an upsurge in cassette buying, or people just like, I'll just watch these songs on YouTube and just own this artist? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I think the kids are there's some kind of lo-fi thing. Oh, absolutely, back. yeah. But they were from Canada. It was just there was some, but it was they were. Had makeup and they played rough and they sang crazy, but it was still almost arty. Yeah. And um and then here come the knots. They look like they just got done washing dishes. Four yeah. girls and they just yeah. bought the fucking house. And I mean it's what makes me it's like I love your city. I love the other city. <laughs> but we are the well, it's we are the center of the universe. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I know uh, we're, people people definitely believe that well, Memphis, like, it's true. But it's I like, mean they don't have to believe it. I'm from you know what I mean? Yeah, but it, no, I know. But that's and I'll argue no, exactly. with people. No, and I and I get and I can see that. But I love it, and that's the I've never been there. Oh man. We've never played there. You should come. I know. I mean you got we, stay we've at the been, house. We've had friends there forever. Yeah. And we played Nashville Ugh. a lot. Why? I think I think it was also well, like more recently, just because we've just been like, oh, we know people there now. But I think we originally got booked there at some weird, 
someone told me it was like a, I don't know, it was like some weird mall thing on the outskirts of town, and Ooh. it was the band Hollywood, that hardcore band, booked the show. I, so, the thing is, is there is a lot of young kids now that do live, so. Yeah. And maybe it's also like the scene was like a lot, we were coming from a more straight edge scene. Yeah. And Post raid, as I'm sure we'll get to, Memphis was a, a party town. It was a little bit of a wasteland. Yeah, a little bit of a party I'm town. Gonna I'm gonna admit. Um, yeah. Um, so, but before we get to that, I want to. We're still gotta. I still, I'll keep pulling us back, but I, I love know, the way, ways we keep going. Trust me, there's like so many bands I want to hit on. Anti scene. Definitely want to talk about them. It's like uh, I love that band. That's a band to me that's like works true heel. In yeah. The oh no, sense. I just and that's the thing is I couldn't appreciate them. For years, because it was just the whole... It's like, so offensive. Well, there was so... It's not even just the offensive. There's certain things you grow up with that it's hard yeah. to let go of. Yeah. I mean, whether it's... I mean, shit from your child movies. Yeah. Or things. And there's certain bands, you know, that it's yeah. just like, no, I'll never... And then now you go back and you're like, man, this stuff is awesome. <laughs> yeah. But there's a part of you that's just... You know, it's like... It's like, I'm never going to like The Grateful Dead. Yeah. I, I've put it on been like, okay, maybe I'm wrong. It's like... But it just affects you to the core. And that's an extreme example, but there's certain bands that... That does it. That just, yeah, you know... Um, Definitely. And especially if, like, it's a band that you interacted with. Like, yeah. And know. they were, I mean, they were full-blown, like, this leather jacket was made out of fucking 14 yeah. cows. Yeah. And me, you know, and I mean, like, right now I'm wearing the fucking eat me, go to hell, and burn, you know, like, yeah. it doesn't matter. But back then yeah. it was just like, you are the enemy. <laughs> you are you the enemy. Yeah, exactly. And then it is, and then it's the question of the confederate scum thing oh, there's a lot yeah. of stuff that you try to i want to be from a william faulkner south not a gg island south <laughs> you know so to speak or then there's you know and so it takes a while before you can be like oh they put on a great show yeah you know everything is amazing but yeah they uh but i imagine them coming to play memphis at that time when you know stomp crew like Ray. Well, the thing was is there was equal on either side that was the beautiful thing yeah you would have I mean, there might have been, I'm going to say, 30 of us. Actual boys. Yeah, yeah. And then you had your... Larger scene. Larger stuff around that scene. You had the girls. You had... I hate, You know, you don't want to ever use the word, like, B-team or anything, but there was younger kids or peripheral kids. Yeah. And then on the same side, you had 40 to 100 punk rock. Like, we used to have... Drunks versus sober, punks versus straight edge kickball games and stuff like that. Yeah. You had enough. And it's funny how many of the punk rock kids you're like, ah, are like born like, oh, I played baseball for a hundred years before. You know, and you're just like, fuck. <laughs> Look at Scott Radinsky. Yeah. You but know? it's just, so we had enough people that we could go at each other. Yeah. Both bands could have, you know, it wasn't just like any scene and just play through 200 straight edge kids. Yeah. They were chanting. playing. They were playing to their crowd. We yeah. were, I mean, it's like going to see... I snuck into Naked Ray Gun. I didn't like Naked Ray Gun, but it was a show. Yeah. You know, we're Memphis in the 80s. I saw a lot of shit that I just didn't care to see because that's you just wanted to go to a show. Yeah. And so... But if somebody... Like when you're hanging out front, when the redneck in the pickup truck throws something, you all go after them. It's a like family at that point. Yeah. And yeah. you come right back and you start fighting again. Yeah. It's... It's... Yeah. And that's one of the luckier things to me growing up in a smaller scene or... Um, you know, like it wasn't Hot Springs, Arkansas, small. They had a show. They had a, they had that venue. They had mm-hmm. the antenna. You mm-hmm. know, there was some history. Like I think, um, what's like the first? Like, are there any Kill by Death Memphis bands? I'm trying. To, I was trying to think of that on the way down. There's a lot of garage rock. Yeah, uh, like '60s, early '70s stuff. There's not really. There's a band called The Clits. Which oh, is the, the all girl punk rock. Band. Yeah. Um, you can still everyone. They're on Barbarian Records. I have a sheet uncut sheet of the seven inch because oh, awesome. she was like in she was she lives in new orleans now and has a whole different name but um but yeah they were awful there's a thing like like my captain memphis yeah that's jim dickinson yeah if you go on youtube and type in captain memphis versus the clits yeah it's him recording them and then playing the organ they're playing the orpheum and it's like 1977 78 maybe a little later but not much but there's all these people that are like oh we're going to the punk rock show and they're wearing pat benatar spandex and the dude's got their hair and like it's just nobody that was the the, the, the genesis yeah, yeah that was like oh punk is the new thing yeah you know and then there's the kids that came from that did the pistols play they played where the taco bell is on union that means yeah. nothing to you but it was a, sh- a hall like 
Um, like, they played there, yeah. Yeah, they played. That was part of that whole, like, let's take them to the fucked up place. Yeah, let's take them to the south as first. Yeah. But what, yeah, and, and I guess that was, in a lot of places that they played, maybe the the birth of the genesis of a lot of the... Well, that was Jim Dickinson's song and started Mudboy and the Neutrons and yeah. discovered all... Like, it was... Yeah. You know, and it is, like, anywhere small. People are going to discover it and do their own versions, of you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think that was part of it. But, yeah, we got... I mean, I'm still pretty much friends with everybody, unless I just have a feud going on, which <laughs> is not unheard of. But pretty much I, 25 years later or more, I'm still like, oh, shit. You know, we'll play Phoenix. I'll see Mark. We'll play yeah. can somewhere, and I'll see you know, like or just birthday parties and kids things. Like it's or it's always like if the Fugazi or the Misfit or some ridiculous show comes through, then all of a sudden you're seeing everybody you haven't it's seen. A reunion. Yet. Yeah, you're just like, why are we even here? <laughs> you know. So you mentioned that first show way back when that you went to. You couldn't think of who it was. It wasn't Metro band. Waste. It wasn't. It was. Um, I was a high school. Two high school bands. Not no one that did. I guess recorded or anything. What was the first? Or what? Maybe they were bands that recorded stuff. Or I mean, Sobering probably played yeah. it. Um, Metro Waste might have had a tape. I've got some friends. If I make a few phone calls, that can send me all the old uh, <laughs> all the bills and all the old not the bills, the actual music. <laughs> oh, of all the demos, all the demos and stuff. That's I had it all. Awesome. My hard drive died a couple of years back, and I haven't been able to uh, replace it. But I need to call. Yeah, because there's a whole lot of crazy. Like, Paul McIntosh, he plays in this band called Audio Screen Ghosts, and they were Taint Skins way back. He's almost an archivist about it. Like, he has some version of all everything. Well, every scene needs someone like that. Yeah, and a lot of people do different parts of it and everything, but, um, I mean, it's like Pazuzu. If you can get a hold of Pazuzu 7-inch, hell, I'll mail you one. I buy them every time I find them. Wow. They're like $8 most time because people don't know if they're good or bad. Yeah. But it is, when you're dead... What year was that? 87, 88. Wow, I mean, awesome. it was the same. It was the same time as that was the whole thing. Is you would have your raids, yeah, and your Pazuzus, or the Pazuzu would open up for whatever crazy punk band would come through raid or some version of it. Have you ever heard of? I mean, somewhere I don't know who has it as the one way demo pre raid. No. Oh, Steve got out of Lakeside and became born again and gathered up. I want to say Mark might have been in that band, maybe not. Bass player, but he had a whole other, all bunch of like Gary Guy played drums, somebody else, but it was like very Christian straight edge. Whoa. But it wasn't hardline. Like it was one way forever. Yeah. And then the first early raid stuff was just straight edge. Yeah. The, the first, uh, is first, it first demo. seven inch or demo that's the demo. A, the youth crewy kind of. Yeah. And that's where so. everybody was. But, and then he started because Sean, uh, Vegan Reich show. Yeah, yeah. Put that ad. And then him and Steve started, I mean, the whole communiques and all that kind of stuff, it wasn't a joke. No. Well, no, no, but I'm saying, but it was conversations where they were like, yeah, then we'll do this, or oh, we'll do this. And you're just like, all of a sudden you're watching them build these, like, how ridiculous can we get? (laughs) You know, and it's kid stuff. I mean, it was just like, I mean, I carried a fucking, I fixed shoes as a teenager. That was my job. Yeah. And I bought a five pound hammer, like a little short handle hammer. I sanded it off at the shoe shop and wood burn stomp crew at the fucking side and clear coated it, drilled a hole and wore it on my hip for at least four shows before it literally almost crippled. I left that in a hotel in Nashville because Raid and um, oh, Annie Schism played a show, which was wow, yeah, crazy, weird. Bill. And we had 20 kids. I was one of the few ones old enough to actually check into a hotel, but I left it wrapped up in a gray side by side shirt on the desk checking it out so I'm sure whatever guy saw that was like we just checked in 20 ball head kids they have fucking hammers that say stomp crew and fucking crazy you know like what white gang did we just you oh, know yeah, let into the, let into the rooms was, they blew out one of the circuits trying to shave everybody's heads like it was just it was just crazy but we would do that you know yeah. like you think you're tough as hell but you end up looking back you're like we look like a swim team but still like that like I think that's the thing that sets that the hardline stuff uh oh out from a lot of other yeah well that's the thing is when we thought straight edge was dead yeah i moved to minneapolis for a summer chased some old girl up there went to uh it's not seven league boots it's uh oh they're from mankato seven uh mini uh, mankato libido boys oh yeah that was my first show i saw in minneapolis wow straight entry and i met some straight edge kids and they were straight edge straight straight edge and i'm walking around like why do you keep saying that man that shit's dead it's hardline now yeah and they're just like 
what the fuck are you talking about? Like, that was how <laughs> Memphis was so, like, we were just like, no, we don't call ourselves. We're hardline. Yeah. You know, I'll kill your parents, you kill my parents, you know, the the cause yeah. kind of thing. And it's just like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just, so, uh, so how did, so was it just seeing Sean's ad that first? They started talking. And yeah. then I guess he knew Rat or something. Like, it just, that's how those first three came out. Yeah. And it, um, yeah. And then just, that was the whole. Like, so was Raid already kind of like on the same, were Raid, they militant or we not? Wanted, I mean, we, we, like, like the. The little, we were the stomp crew, yeah. so obviously we were going to be militant. Yeah, you know, obviously, I mean, we wore hoodies, we wore camouflage shorts, cut the right way. You bought two pairs of champion socks, so the C's could be going both ways. Yeah, you wear Vans that have I don't have them on, but you don't with your low top lace ups. Yeah, you don't have the ones without the padding. Those are girl shoes. You had like there was rules, rules. Yeah, you know, and um, so obviously there was the element of fashion there. Yeah, you know, but as a whole, it was it was. There were people that did things at night. Mm-hmm. The joke about renting videos meant somebody was going to go do throw, something. Do something. Yeah. A couple of kids went to, went to jail, got out, and got put on probation. And it was the Memphis Seven or something. They took their yeah. girlfriends or something dumb. Then their girlfriends flipped out and turned them in. And so, um, but yeah, it was it was just building. And you yeah. know, everybody, this was uh, pre blood sport. Yeah. So nobody was kickboxing yet. Yeah. But it came about a year later, you know, where everybody's going to take up tie boxing or whatever, yeah. you know, but everybody was tough. Yeah. A bunch of 18 or 16 to 22 year old dudes who all thought they were the toughest things in the world, you know. So did you get right into hardcore or did you have like a punk phase or was it all just one thing? For me, it was, I mean, I bought... Yeah, I mean, I, once again, it's like GBH, Midnight Madness yeah. and Beyond. Yeah. Oh, it's so bad, but I still, I put it so on. love it. Iroquois! You know, and it's just like, God, this is terrible. Because once you discover the clay years, you're like, oh. <laughs> that's why they that's like why, it. Yeah, you know, and I just, yeah, I was never the, I mean, even when I was, I didn't drink or do drugs or smoke or anything mm-hmm. until 25, 26. Mm-hmm. So there was also that element. So you were straight edge. I wasn't even straight edge. I was you straight edge, but didn't know automatically it. straight edge. Yeah. yeah, I just that was the thing for me was I skated. I was a skater. Yeah, yeah. I love skating. I mean, you couldn't keep me, you know, and yeah. So, but in the skating, there was the hardcore element. But it was. It was like I couldn't stay in the Sex Pistols. Mm-hmm. Just was like, ugh. but now I'm like, man, that's a good rock and roll band. That's an amazing, amazing record. You know, like it's so yeah. good. But back then, it was just like, bah. Well, yeah, it's punk, and you're. You, and I was hardcore. You're a hardcore kid. Yeah, that's in the end. That's like if it wasn't. I mean. I'm just now in the last four or five years appreciating the Melvins. Yeah. If it wasn't, yeah. you know. It was the enemy. Yeah. It was just like, I mean, I joked about like, I uh, I didn't talk to Mike Ness about it, but I was talking to Johnny Two Bags about it one time. It was like the social D stuff. I was like, man, them getting back together and putting Prison Bound was about as likely as Minor Threat getting back at the time. Yeah. I love that first Mommy's Little Monster record. We went and saw them. It's the first show I ever fell asleep at. They got up. It's the first time I'd ever seen a band have to open up in front of another band. And, um, like, they didn't take their stuff down. And I was like, what? You know, okay, that's weird. And then they got up, and we were like, because it was 80 kids going, Mommy's Little Mom. Like, we'd only seen Another State of Mind. Yeah. And I bought that record the day it came out and was like, all right, I don't know about this country shit. You know, but whatever. And that was just, I was that dumbass that was my age but yeah you know you had your tastes yeah and they played they were like we don't know mommy's little monster another state of mind we haven't relearned because it was a whole different band so. yeah and i was like well, shit i'm out <laughs> I had my backpack hoodie up laid down on the table and was just like wake me up when you're going home and i slept through that entire show <laughs> you know and i never looked back I'm like that purple record with all the hit everybody's like no nah, no nah. and i was just like I mean, I can tell you what songs they are. Yeah. But I've never owned one. I never look back. Yeah. You know, and... Um, I can see that. But that was the kind of framework. Didn't like the Misfits when I was a kid. Yeah. You know? And um, so there was a certain element of... It had to be... It was almost like... Was was punk the genre you were kind of waiting for? Hardcore, I should say? The genre well, you were kind of waiting was just, for? I was angry. Like I said, yeah. you know, family-wise. Yeah. You know? I was skipping school. I'd cut the screen sideways and down so that it looked like the window wasn't open when I'd sneak out at night. Yeah. I'd go rob uh, 
speed detectors from cars and sell them to the preppy kids at school. I, you know, I didn't do drugs. Yeah. But I was a total dick, <laughs> you know? I'd roll bowling the balls down the hill and watch them hit cars, you know? It yeah. was just, it's like that joke in that punk movie or whatever, the Don Letts one, where Ron Baker was like, we were sober and we were assholes. Oh, yeah. That's kind of, I was like, I can identify with that, you know? <laughs> all the, But discovering straight edge and the raid stuff was, I mean, like Steve and all them, they got fucked up. They all drank and partied. And then they all got clean for some reason. Whether Steve had to go to rehab yeah. as a kid, whatever. And then, or people were like, oh, I'm going to quit drinking because there's this new thing, straight edge. Yeah. I just kind of was like, ooh, I can hang out with some kids and I'm not going to have to sit around and either watch them fuck each other or drink. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, this is boring. And um, so I kind of just gravitated towards it. And I had skater bangs. I was. You know, I had the negative approach record. I was, you know, and then all of a sudden it was, I shaved my head, oversized shirts, and uh, fucking go. So what were the bands, like, you know, obviously the red bands you were into? Yeah. Uh, and that's something, was there a point where you turned off that stuff and it just became about other hardline bands, or was it always open to, like, I mean, other we, shit? I mean, that judge, I mean, I mean, judge is judge. the prototype. Yeah. You know, I mean, that is, that is, and I watched that. I guess it's only two, three parts. A noisy documentary. Yeah. Yeah. And it was amazing. Yeah. I just wish it was longer, but it is. I mean, it's, there was just no apologies. You're like, this is what, you know. Um, you it's live. so empowering when you're like this angry, straight edge kid. Yeah. And you hear like, you hear just someone yelling like a, a gym coach. Yeah. That you well, it was, can, you're that right. you could hit somebody. Yeah. You that today never wanted you to hit anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. that, um, Oh crap! I'm forgetting all the titles and everything. The Orange Record. He had his arm like Youth of Today. The last Youth of Today record. Oh, the uh, the um, we're not in this alone. Uh, yeah, I uh, know. Uh, can't uh, we're not in this alone? Yeah, yeah. Horrible record. Really? Oh, now I go back. And yeah, like, now okay. you're like yeah. But back you're then right, I, was, no. I was like, what kind of shit is this? Yeah. You know, because at that time you were moving. I mean, let's just be honest. Well, with the disengaged seven inch then, you must have really been on uh, that. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, the Ray Porcella. Uh, a... Man, the saddest thing is I bought that Ray Porcell. And I put it on, and I had a girlfriend that I barely knew at the time. And I was literally stopping at every chain. Like, I was just humming along. Yeah. And she's like, I thought you never heard this before. And I was like, oh, I've heard this before. <laughs> you know, it's like, I can, you know, like, you just, you just know. Muscle memory. Yeah, you just know every chugga-chugga, every yeah. stop. But then, you know, the progression is judge to integrity, man. Yeah. You know, and then... It just like they were writing letters back and forth with Steve, and he, that dwig guy was just being full weird, you yeah. know. And it's, he might be like, I still have never met him. I don't know. I've heard the whole cutting the ears off in the morgue, throwing them out at shows. I've heard, you know, like Cleveland One Life Crew, blah, blah, blah. You just, you know, I'm like, is it the same as the raid stomp crew reputation? Or were they really up there like killing I think, people? I think it's like, I think it's like the raid stomp crew reputation a little bit. I, I think, I think, you know, I'm, in no uncertain terms, Dwight is definitely scary in a lot of ways. Yeah, well, but that was that was the whole thing at the time. But you were just like, oh my god! Yeah, well, it's, it's larger than life, and it was pre-internet, so but that fucking music was so awesome. Yeah, you're just like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, and the saddest, saddest thing in the world, and this is where that fork starts for a lot of people, is I'm aging myself. I'm about to embarrass myself, but it happened. <laughs> But that's where all of a sudden post that and that's that whole thing where band, you start here ministry all of a sudden land of rape and honey and you can't distinguish all you're hearing is yeah. and you're like fuck this is heavy as fuck and you're like son of a bitch <laughs> you know or Pantera vocal yeah. display of power came out yeah so pretty much you were just working your way to you know what metal or yeah, metal core or heavy or, or just being a dumbass you yeah know, like fighting people in the parking lot it was just such a looking back as an older guy that has like lived through it but it is it's you're, you're hardcore you're like oh this you know and you would find random stuff but especially in memphis it's getting heavy 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 you slowly worked your way to pantera yeah you were just like turning into a thug yeah you know and then you hear that like in hardcore now there's like bands that there's a pantera post pantera Pantera influence went oh, through a man. lot of hardcore, yeah, I mean, like, and that's, tough guy stuff. And I got lucky. I feel like I got lucky. <laughs> I moved to Minneapolis for a year, um, and worked at a record store. Just with my, blind approach. Oh, shit, 
Man, that's I those two park. singles are so good. I went to. He gave me one of them. I went to his. I, he still comes to the shows, and I still get like. Which one do you have? Is it the one with the drawing on the cover or the band photo on the cover? The drawing. I've got an extra of the band photo one. Let me see if I still have it. I will give you that cover. Man, but you he need just that. he came. He was the, that was the first time I ever saw the gatefold. Um, Victim in pain. No, 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 uh, no. They were way when I discovered them at the time. They were all the. It was the Baldies versus the. DMS. Okay. The, yeah. That was the two things. Yeah. And I think Chip Blum Approach, all guys were baldies, I want to say. Yeah. Um, but it was the Gatefold Paul's Boutique record. Oh. They all, and I missed it at home. And I, I was seeing it up in North and not realizing what I was seeing because it was True Till 21 type shit. Or it was all, you know, like, he did. they didn't want to talk about hardcore. Yeah. They were growing their hair out. They were like, man, there's this Beastie Boys, check your head, Paul's Boutique, and da da da, you know. And but they were, you know, and it just, I came home and all those kids, like Cypress fucking Hill, wrecked everything, man. <laughs> and um, because all of, all of a sudden Raid was gonna get back together, and they were gonna be rap rock, not <laughs> like Rage Against the Machine, but they all were smoking pot. Steve was gonna sing, and this other kid was gonna rap. Like it was a total. It the drummer kid got in a car wreck. And he's he's C Mooney's brother. It's Alec Mooney, and he's fine now. I mean, he's yeah. not fine. I mean, he's yeah. He's he walks around, does things, but he was like in a coma forever. And, wow. But that stopped Raid from wrecking their legacy. Yeah, is basically because they were about to come out full, just like Whoa. that would have been it. And um, and so but yeah, I came home to everybody. Fucking, I mean, I had a red Carhartt thing because yeah. I was up north and you couldn't get that's when I first discovered Carhartt yeah. once again it's all that stuff is so funny how fashion plays into it all. yeah into it it's but, so, such a big part of the identity of being involved in punk yeah and so um, I had a red Carhartt rain jacket kind of whatever one and I had sewn a Chromax patch on the back because you just didn't get that shit in Memphis and I think I got it at like a, a head shop yeah and the fact that you it's like it's just a fucking Chromax well, that's another band <laughs> Your Chromags fit in between the Judge and Integrity. Yeah, they do. Like, there's that whole heavy thing. Um, but, yeah, I think I ended up trading it for some crazy something. Because it was like, oh, like that jacket. It was dumb. Like, <laughs> I think I got like 50 records for it. It was just something insane. <laughs> something amazing. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, so everything, all my people, so to speak. Oh, there's this one little thing. I got kicked out of Hardline for sleeping with Mark from Raid's girlfriend. Uh, That's why I had to move to Minneapolis. So there was that. You remember a great thing that I wanted to talk about? Getting kicked out of Hardline, because yeah. that's really a thing. Scott Bybin. Oh, uh, Scott from, Bybin was a lunatic. He got kicked out. Well, Scott Bybin does amazing things. And yeah. He's a very creative person. <laughs> and I've learned since then that amazing creative people sometimes or a little, have twists. Yeah, twists. Where Scott Bybin probably would have just left anyway. He showed up at the first Hardline Gathering with all these amazing at rooftop gardens, like how to make zines. Yeah. But somehow, I don't remember how it happened, but there was a video that surfaced, whether he had it, of him... Asking his girlfriend about all a threesome. Kind, all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah. And so that was done. They were yeah. just like, you're a freak. You're, you're out of Hardline. I mean, I was there when that happened. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Like, that was... Two things happened at the first hardline gathering is that I forget. Man, I'm just, this is where I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Um, <laughs> well, no, I just I think <clears throat> there's a Sarah Barrier who's now Sevapria or something. Yeah. Um, I don't talk to her anymore. We had sideways because of our friend Katie that died, but she was a larger girl, a beautiful girl. But somebody was making fun about like have sex with her, be like. And a rocking, it was just something really, really horrible, yeah, horrible. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's Sean refused to play. Vegan Wright didn't play the first gathering. Oh, I think I don't think because he was like, "Fuck this, I'm out." You guys are fucking crazy. Like it was just, it was an interesting. I mean, you had Ryan from Hardball, Hard Hardball, Hardball. Yeah, he was a pretty good guy. Um, and then I had come back having been kicked out. And everybody was a little bit like, Mark had to forgive me. Yeah. You know, they wanted a tattooed apology at some point. I think I agreed to it, but then it was just like... We're going to get a, 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 a tattoo I, of an apology. They wanted all kinds of shit. Whoa. And it was... It just, was so real. Like, oh, I no. I, here's what I mean. 
I don't think I'm breaking. Like we were literally were getting at some point. You just don't realize how not serious it was in the whole scheme of the world. Yeah. I mean, it was like we were getting beat up by those skinheads so much. Like my stepdad had an entire arsenal in his house. I was going to take an assault rifle, go up on the roof of the club across the street from the antenna, and shoot these skinheads. It wasn't even a secondary thought in my mind. Wow. Because they were beating, you know, it was just like, but looking back and been like, I'd have just been getting out of jail now. Yeah. You know, but the fact that I even considered it, you know, like, I mean, I think it was not going to happen. But so much stuff got talked about, like all those communiques. Yeah, I mean, it could have. Like, people were doing shit. Like, well, it was shit just got we were, done. We were getting the shit kicked out of us. Yeah, you know, and it was crazy. Like, you couldn't yeah. go to shows, and it was just like, what the fuck? And I talked to Steve, and Steve's like, yeah, yeah, you know. And I, it, but that's the kind of like that's that same aspect with tattooed apology. It was just like, dude, I fell asleep, and your girlfriend climbed on me and the shit out of me, and I'm supposed to get a tattoo. It's like I feel like I saved you a bullet. You know, like, well, it's just like, yeah, the militancy of the whole you, thing. They all showed up. And it's still funny because people still say to this day, like, oh, you're hardline straight. And it's like, and as soon as you know about hardline, you're like, no, no, no. It's oh. completely different than what you think it <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, well, it's like, I still have my hammers. Yeah. You want to see weird? I don't wear shorts in New York anymore. Yeah. Because people just don't know. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's, and it's not as serious unless there's somebody who's pissed. Who knows? Yeah. Like, you see older dudes are like, the fuck is that? Yeah. You know? And that was my first tattoo, Palnet Stereo. Got the cross judge hammers that says Stomp Crow on my leg. Yeah. You know? And, yeah, but it was so freaking... Real. Real. But looking back on it, like I said, as an adult, you're just like, Jesus fucking Christ. We did some dumb shit. You know? It was amazing. And it was a learning experience, but it was still so, like, I almost shot people. Yeah. I contemplated it without thinking this is a bad idea, mm-hmm. you know. And um, but yeah, I almost got a tattooed apology. If I'd have known somebody had tattooed, I'd probably have a fucking apology somewhere covered up on me or not. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like that's how crazy it was. But when it came back for that first hardline gathering, that's where you kind of see, like, I don't know. It's like the joke about communism or something. It's all a good idea on paper as yeah. a whole. I mean, except for some of the like pro-life crazy yeah, conservative stuff. stuff. Yeah. But I mean, Scott Bybin literally rolled in was like, okay, I've got all these five or six things to do. Like, how we can live off the land or yeah. live off the house, you know. But really, we were just all a bunch of privileged white kids that are like, I'm gonna fuck shit up. Or, yeah. You know, it was just, yeah, fat bitches. Or something. It was just, you know, it was just like, God. But, well, it's so weird how also, like, yeah, no matter... How well intentioned sometimes punk just replicates all the bullshit of well, the outside just, world. That's what you are. I mean, that's anything. I feel you're a product like. of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're not gonna. You're not unlearning anything. You're just taking what you've learned and putting it in a different context. Yeah. You know. And then, but that was the thing is, at some point when I came back after the hard first hard guy gathering and went to Minneapolis, all that weird stuff, I came home and every, and that's when I ended up moving in with. Uh, I lived with those kids. I mean, they were like. Some of them, it was like, they would drink 40s, smoke pot, and then about 8 o'clock, drop acid, hang out all night, just tripping balls. I just fuck with them. I was sober. I was just fucking with them. And then at some point, you smoke a lot of pot around 2 in the morning, and it heightens the acid. Like, I'm hearing these. I don't, you know. Yeah. And they just get wrecked every yeah. night. Yeah. But across the hall is William from Cop Out. Oh, shit. Yeah. And so, and I'd known him as a kid, sort of. He lived in my neighborhood, but I met him. He knew I was, he liked Raid. He liked, he knew I was a hardcore kid. Yeah. And somehow. What, did the Cop Out and Raid ever interact at all? I was or? too whole, Raid was long gone before Cop Out. Cop Out came around. Yeah. But it was just, he was, he's, William would always get drunk and be like, agnostic front. <laughs> like, you know, he wanted, he wished he was 10 years older. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so, but that for me, I feel like saved me from a lot of basketball gym shorts and Adidas sandals or so to speak. You know what I mean? Like I was able to make that move. So I kind of branched real quick and ended up over. I lived, I moved in with them. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was like all of a sudden it was man with gun. It was cop out. Yeah. It was all that. It was ebullition records. Yeah. So I kind of got a, I got lucky because I would watch everybody, you know, like 
you just don't want to end up like you're in Mad Ball. So were like were the guys from like uh, like Todd and those guys from and, and from Cop Out and Face Down were they going to raid shows? Were they involved in that? Yeah, they're young. Well, they're, there's a ch- well, as younger Todd, kids. Todd I mean. and all of Burdett Incorporated. Yeah, Burdett. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I hate them so much. <laughs> I've had the best <laughs> one time we're outside of CBGB's and we're like listening to TI, like the TI record had just Damn. come out after playing a show and Todd comes up and he's like, what are you listening to? And we're like, TI. He's like, TI. I'm like, yeah, you know, TI rap? Rap. He is rap the biggest music. I get, you want to hear some fucking Todd stories? God damn. <laughs> oh, I hate him. Paul's a little better now, but they just, yeah, it would have just but that was even before they moved. They still lived in El- Brownsville. Yeah, and Todd yeah. had chased Stephanie up to Boston, but it was yeah, just... Yeah, that's where they were in Boston. But I got really lucky, I feel like, because it didn't. It didn't turn into, oh, the old days, oh, Rev 7. It's just like, I don't care. Yeah. Because I still get just as excited about John Henry West or Cap and Jazz. Or, John, you know what I mean? John Henry but West. You know, that you know what I'm, so sick. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I was able to yeah. find I, something new, but it's like I never lost that spirit yeah. like it wasn't high school music it wasn't two years of college music mm-hmm. you know because I was like shows never quit stopping so were you when did you start playing Lucero I never played until Lucero that was really you had never like done a band in no. high I don't have to play guitar until I still I mean when we knew huh, how do we say this I did not know how to play guitar when we started Lucero if we had two songs yeah, I knew two songs. No, I, but I mean, like, but even like as a, you know, I don't know how to play anything, but I've found a way to shoehorn my way into a lot of bands as a vocalist. Well, I just did you ever do anything? I, I don't know. Well, they tried to get me to sing for Pure Blood when the original guy quit, and I just, I love poetry. I love yeah. reading. Yeah, I love playing guitar. Yeah, I don't know any of our lyrics. Yeah, and yeah. unless it's a chorus on old straight edge stuff, I generally. Have to get the lyric sheet out. I'm sure you're telling some important story, <laughs> but unless you hit me, don't bore me. Get to the chord, or yeah. you know, yeah. I want to sing along, or something, you know. Yeah. So especially hardcore stuff, like yeah, you know, that was always watermelon, watermelon. <laughs> you know, you just, you just make up any word, yeah. and so yeah, I would have been, you know, William tried to get me to sing. It was, it yeah. would have been something like you write, just scream, yeah. But at the time, I was like, yeah, and just I didn't have that desire to do it yeah or I didn't know what I somehow it didn't translate mm-hmm. so yeah I wanted to start I wanted to learn to paint play guitar I just wanted to say I want a demo in a 7 inch or something yeah so but yeah I never played in any I was the, I paid for shows most of the time yeah I, you know like I was your normal I was friends with them I didn't help load stuff in I grew up with them but I still walked in gave them my 3 to 5 dollars saw the show yeah you know and um so yeah, I was never in any. I sang back up on the Raid Seven Inch. I was one of the like twenty kids on Bald Bry. Yeah, on the Seven Inch. You got your credit. I got my credit. That's not on your Discogs. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It doesn't come up. I shouldn't. I was like, I was it's like, a oh, secret. Oh, <laughs> it's not even my real name. It's Bald Bry. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, because I had sh- Steve had tried to uh, shave his head in the back before a show. And nobody back then was shaving their heads bald. Yeah. So, and Rebel, the bouncer, just fucked his hair up. Oh, it was awful. And he did the whole show. There's pictures floating around. He's got his hood up for the most of it, but you can still, it's just a train wreck. And after the show at his house, they shaved it. He had to go bald. Yeah. He hated it. But I was like, that might be the most amazing. Like, I quit. I I still, to this day, no guard. I just... And just I mean, go. I did it for 25, like there is no reason in the world to fuck with a guard anymore. But I, and that's a bald bride because everybody else had their high tops or yeah. their weird shit. Yeah. And I just, paid. I just discovered, I was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. So I was bald bride. Was it, was the, I don't want to keep you too much longer because I can as, talk to you for fucking Man, as long as you're hours. not in trouble, I'm having a fun. Well, I do have the newborn baby at home, but yeah. this is, this is something I, I'm having so much fun. Um, yeah. uh, What's the Goner Records? When did that start? When did that whole scene show up? Was um, that ever? Like, yeah, we wish, man. They're so cool. We're so not cool. Um, I keep begging them to let us. I was like, "Well, Governor Bolivian song, please <laughs> let us be on a Goner, just one seven inch." Because um, it was like Greg. Well, I guess the Oblivion start. Well, the Oblivions did their thing, but Eric started a label called Goner. Yeah. And then when Greg had 
Legba Records, and he moved to Asheville. Eric came in and just basically created a storefront called the Goner. Yeah. You know, they still probably make more money off of the mail order than, but I mean, there's constant. But then they start having Goner Fest, and it is kind of blown up. Like, yeah. it is, Memphis is awful when it comes to music, and like, if it's not Elvis or some old producer, like, it's, they will, I mean, we, 17 years, every night we get on stage, hey, this is Lucero from Memphis, like, it just, they don't care. Yeah. You know, so for Goner to actually have some basically international festival that have this just continually the growing under the noses, you know. But it's funny you say that because, like, Memphis, it's it's like whether it's you guys or it's tragedy right. or it's... Let's or just it's, stop for a second. Tragedy or from Portland. Well, okay. I mean, his hero's <laughs> gone. I'm just kidding. But Yannick, did Yannick live in Memphis for a while, too? He probably stayed there. Because I think... Yeah, when he... Because he was in Hero's Gone. Yeah, but he they, Yeah, so maybe. I'm just teasing. Okay, I'm I know. Just teasing. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> but I mean, like, okay, but, like, okay... What would grow into tragedy? Oh. Um, what would grow into, you know, Jay Retard? Yeah. Like, you know, like, there's just so much diversity of sounds of bands that would go on to become sort of important in different genres. Well, that's where, I mean, but that's the thing is, that's the beauty of Memphis. And especially, I mean, any music, I imagine, but in Memphis. But, I mean, we played shows for three years and nobody knew who we were. Mm-hmm. Like, we could literally do anything we wanted. My whole entire guitar style. I'm playing all over Ben singing. Like, I'm doing, you know, things that I've kind of grown out of, but in the early days, yeah, people would be like, oh, your use of space is so amazing. And it's like, it's because I don't know what next note to go to. <laughs> and I instinctively want to do these weird harmony notes over he's singing. So when he quits singing, I quit playing. Yeah. So there's these huge holes, which most normal guitar players are like, it's a big fucking hole right there. Yeah. But at the time, it was just this huge, it made, made these songs extra spacious. Yeah. But that's the same as, I mean, freak jay got jay was doing that retard stuff for fucking ever nobody yeah. liked him you yeah. know greg discovered him basically you know and um and yeah and then it got he was gonna be the next paul um oh shit he told me he was going to be the next kurt cobain he did no i remember one time we were talking and wow. he was telling me some guy from universal oh, no. told him he was going to be the next kurt cobain everybody yeah, that's, yeah. um no everybody thought he was going to his songwriting everybody thought he was uh replacements Oh, Paul Westerberg? Paul West, he was going to be the yeah. next Paul Westerberg. Yeah. And I was always like, I don't see it. But he also, I didn't, you know, years later, yeah. you're like, oh, there it is. Because yeah. back then it was just, I'm biting heads off of fucking bats. And, yeah. you know, like my funniest, the fun, he was randomly at a show we had to play. And there's a duo, a, a rap duo, guy and a girl, beatbox called Double Dong. Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. <laughs> they are the whitest, most yeah. normalest people in the world. Hey, back here. I'm doing a podcast, oh. and um, Roy might even been there for that. But um, they um, they looked like two preppy kids, and they would, all their songs were about sex, double dong, <laughs> <laughs> and so. But they would do things like, oh, "Gonna put it in your eyes," yeah. da, da, da. and Jay started fucking with them, <laughs> and they chased him down, threw him on the ground, and he was dry humping him while he was singing. And Jay was, it's a look of pure fear in his eyes, clawing, trying to get away. <laughs> and all of us, there might have been 12 people there. It was a favor. Hey, there's bands playing. Will you come play open for them? Yeah. You know, yeah. we get down there and we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> but if you ever look them up, Double Dong, and they are, it's, it's just like, what? But that might have been one of the funniest, like, because you got Jay alone. Yeah. You talk about records. He was great. He was amazing. Three people walk into that room and he becomes the biggest dickhead in the world. Yeah. And that was part of his whole, like, yeah. you know, I mean, this club or the horseshoe we played the night or two before silver dollar so it was that before the whole uh they punched yeah yeah it was it was all the people that do this club that was yeah doing that but show. that was one of those things where we were just he's like this equipment is expensive no 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 we were yeah. just like what a bitch you know it's like we get i pour out a pint glass of fucking booze out of the monitors every night not you yeah. know like they throw beer on us on a regular yeah and we're the sissy country band yeah you fucking roll around it. You're going to break it anyway. You know, he was just like, uh, he was, you know, one of those people, like we talked about before, who's like a genius as yeah. far as like the way he sees music, but it, like a genius, he was oh, he really was, unhinged. And yeah. like, I had nothing but amazing experiences with him over my mm-hmm. time, but I've got friends that had horrific experiences. Like I said, he'd come in the right when I worked at last chance, he'd come in there and we'd spend hours talking, Yeah, you know, but then like I said, you'd be somewhere else. And if it was, it's hard, you know. He's just like, Argh. and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, you know. And yeah. you don't get mad or whatever, but um, 
But that double dong story is always just <laughs> it's like you thought you were being cool and funny, and you got fucking. <laughs> You got showed. Yeah, those fucking preppy little weirdo sex maniacs fucking showed you. <laughs> well, Brian, I could go on for another hour. We kept you for an hour. No, believe me, I want to talk. Well, I'm like, I feel like I didn't even say anything. I just chatted. But this is exactly what it is. <laughs> I want to have you on for a part two. Oh, yeah. And a, a part three and four. If you come at me with, or I can, I don't know. I mean, there's whole sections like early Memphis hardcore. No, exactly. That's the thing. We haven't even gotten into like Carl quit and his hero is gone when he wouldn't play quit playing circus music. One of the best stories ever. We can end on that story. You want to hear how sad? No, here's the saddest. This is few regrets in my life. Yeah, very few regrets. Yeah, like literally, I've done. I was bored. I was like, I watched whatever whoever played first. Carl was mad. Okay. And there was all these skate shoes. Carl's shoes were in sh- just tatters. And Yannick wouldn't just give him a pair of shoes. He was going to make $20, and Carl didn't have $20. But I think it was like the breaking point. Yeah, it was pretty much over by that point. It was on their last tour, right? Yeah. They kind of, and they went it was on. E-150 was on it? The oh, band yeah. from Madrid? I mean, I believe you. Yeah, okay. But at this point, I mean, I'm the guy that would go with pom-poms <laughs> and protest, like, pop, music, pop. I just I hate Todd Burdett. <laughs> I mean, he said so much shit. He is now a face painting, <laughs> Seattle Seahawks jersey wearing, beer guzzling, bar going. Like, you know, I, I don't get tattoos. I've only kissed one. I mean, he just said so. They don't come back to Memphis. Yeah. They don't play Memphis because they well, know everybody here. Because of this story. Yeah, well, just. <laughs> I don't think they, they, oh, no, actually, did play Memphis a couple times. Right? They have come back, but yeah. they don't. Usually, if you look at their schedule, it's just, yeah. very rarely do they because there's some kids. But, um,. Oh shit! What story was that? In the We're talking about the last one, the Carl. Oh, the Carl stage. quitting. Oh, so I was like, "Fuck! They're about to start. Fuck it! I'm going home." I start walking home, and I get home. It was like 25 minutes later. Not, you know, I sit around. I get a call, and they're like, "You gotta come back." Carl just quit. And I was like, "Are you fucking serious?" Like it was just like, "Oh, this could have it was just there." But from what I have you seen the video? No. The video is incredible. It's just like the, you know, his hero's gone wall of feedback. Yeah. And then he just busts out the bass line and just won't stop. And oh, yeah. then it's just like, Todd's just like, fuck, and throws down the guitar and storms off. And that's the end of the set. <laughs> I was there. I hate him so much. I don't, I've missed so many other shows. I fucked with him so much. You know, the worst thing they did was kick Big Pat out of the band because he wasn't cool. Yeah. I mean, that was literally the fact that they put out that. Uranus 7-inch split or whatever and re-recorded it with Yannick all that parts that right there was the like like fuck you guys <laughs> you know like that was they have an agenda so that's they, the Memphis Canada beef the roots of the Memphis Canada beef <laughs> no we, we kicked out a Memphin, uh, Memphisinian no no, no it's not even that well it was just it's not it's the fucking Burdett Incorporated man yeah they were like oh Skate Rock's cool let's start Death Threat oh D-Beat's cool let's start a D-Beat band oh Punk Rock's cool let's Start that police, whatever, call a cop, not call, but whatever band. Like, it's just, what's cool, I'm going to start a band. But it's in, it's insane with tragedy how, like, that band is, like, one of those bands that oh. launched a genre. I listened know? to that first record when it came out, and I was like, this sounds like fucking Rancid. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> the first tragedy LP, though, that was like Rancid. Rancid record. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this so, is, we should have part two and just debate. <laughs> Well, no, but I mean, at the time... I know, but I can, hear, I can understand. It's like... I mean, he came out. I mean, Todd, his whole thing was... It's like, fuck, pop me. I mean, he followed Jawbreaker some tour up and down the East Coast. But, he, you know, he could play. He loves R.E.M. He loves all this crazy music. But it was a complete disavowal. And then the best is they all came into the store one day. Um, it was Paul. It was Billy. It was Todd. I want to say Chrissy Piper was with him. Was dating one uh, of them. Chrissy, yeah. I know Chrissy. Um, she was dating one of them or hanging out. And then... Um, from Ashes Rise, drummer maybe. Um, somebody was drumming or doing something for him. And they were talking, I was talking about like, I was like, yeah, Lucera's, they're like, oh, you know, we played somewhere. So I was like, yeah, crowds are weird. Some cities are white cap preppy kids. Some kids are crusty, something, something. He's like, nobody. Like Todd just popped up, was like, your band sucks. Nobody likes your band. And I was like, without even missing a beat. <laughs> like the half a tank of gas song is about his girlfriend that left him for being nickels. I was like, songs about your ex-girlfriend suck, don't they? And everybody got all like, ooh. I was just like, you know, because you're a fucking cartoon character, man. When he was younger, it was t-shirt and jeans and slowly but surely became black denim jackets, wretched patches, faux hawks, and it's just like, 
you're supposed to have that and then eventually become he's just created on top of created on top of created oh well, so it's so hard like you know and I you know coming from Toronto now with Drake Man. you know like it's so hard when you when Drake's you from grow. Memphis pardon me Drake's from Memphis well I know well oh he's born yeah. there that's yeah, always Drake's dad hangs out a lot my daughter was like I just met Drake's dad yeah I don't know and, I'm, and believe me I'm not a, a Drake basher like a lot oh. of people in Toronto like he's he's done really well for himself but it's like it's weird when you watch someone grow up yeah and then they become an, an icon of any stature obviously small eye icon with some people we're talking oh, about yeah. and big eye icon with other people but like when you know, you're like, oh, but you were different. And well, that's 17 thing. years of this. When I started this band, people laugh. It's like somehow I got thicker, I'm covered in tattoos, beard down in my dick. They're like, you don't, you didn't, you always look that scary. I was like, <laughs> God, I look scary. You know, but there's. A, I would have thought you walking around with a hammer and a shaved head and a shaved face is scary. But I was looked like I was 12. <laughs> you still got a hammer. <laughs> well, that's true. But that's the whole thing. Is just the whole junk punk rock joke. Like, yeah. Is like, that's when you paint dumb shit on your jacket when you're 14. Yeah. Not when you're 40. <laughs> and so it was always just watching that. That's why part of it is they come back and, you know, he said a lot of crazy shit. Yeah. You know, and then now it's like, well, I was in Europe. You have to try the beer there. It's famous. And you're like, no, I have a feeling a lot of straight edge people went there and didn't try the beer. Yeah. You know? And yeah. then it was just, that was, this, he was master of like, you know, like, you're just a slut. You know, like, and you're just like, well, he's like, I've only kissed one person. I was like, I bet you've kissed a lot of people by now. Or like, no tattoos. Tattoos are dumb. And then, like, he traded all these seven inches, and some of them were screwdriver seven inches. And the whole argument with that was like, it was before they were racist. And you're like, really? Why did you have screwdriver seven inches? The infamous pre Nazi screwdriver everybody, in everyone's collection. Yeah, you know, and it was just like, at the time, it was like, no, you shouldn't even have that. The shit that's come out of your mouth. Because I used to, make, I made. I don't know if I actually screened them all or I made the flyer form in the, in the screen, but I um, I made a rebel flag, his hero's gone in their logo, heritage not hate oh patches. My <laughs> oh my God. Because they were so oh anti-Southern. I mean, they moved that way and immediately every interview they did was like, Memphis is just backwards and redneck and this and that. It's just like, fuck you. We work twice as hard and you were, you created your whole aura and took it to the big city. You were, you know, like, you minor leagued us and went big time. But that know? was like a, for a band move, that was oh. a great move. Oh, no, business-wise? <laughs> business-wise? Oh, no, and that's the thing, is you can't fault them for that. No, it's like, but and that's the thing about that band, too, it's like, it's crazy to think that, you know, like, pre-Fugazi, there's been very few bands that have just been like, fuck it, I'm going to exist, uh, post-Fugazi, sorry, I'm going to exist only on my own terms Man. and make my own rules and there will be... Well, I mean, that's... Just, I mean, I guess they're just tragedy now. I mean, just I, tragedy? Yeah, I mean, whatever. I mean, I think they go to Japan and do Death Threat and they do sometime. And Billy or sometimes I'll, I'll hear some story on Instagram or something. Yeah, they, they, they tour quite a... Like, they, they still... I think they can do, like, that, you know, two or three year tour. Man. And, you know, make... I like it, too, that they all... Like, somebody was telling me... This is all stories. I'm probably getting a lot of fucking trouble. or somebody in trouble. I don't care. They come at me. But, like, they all bought motorcycles. Yeah, you know, they have motorbikes. And they all got their asses handed to them on some run because they had the tragedy bird and whatever, like, the lost boy. They had some name. And I guess they were riding down the coast and went to the biker bar. Oh, colors. Yeah, right, and colors. I was just like, all right, dumbasses. I think that about a lot of... I've got a lot of friends now that are, like, punk bikers. Yeah. Like, punk rock kids that are, like, bikers. And then I have That's friends fun. that are punk rock dudes that have become... Legit bikers. Yeah, well, I was, if you're going to do that, if you're going to have six or seven guys with a back patch that says something on it, and you're going to go... Yeah. Like... It's like, you can have, like, your... Yeah, you can have your motorcycle crew, but, like, bear in mind, there's a serious this, culture of these yeah, two. this isn't punk rock. This isn't... <laughs> you're just not deciding one day to be a skinhead, or you're not deciding one day to be a rude boy or fucking crusty. You're like, yeah, you're about to get your asses handed. You're lucky you still have your bikes. Yeah. You know? I look back, I, I remember making a vest, and I'm like, ah, I put some sort of weird fake rocker thing on the back. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, what I'm crazy I'm a fucking we have who am I? we have back patches now like Oliver did them it's the devil and yeah it's the loose arrow in the Memphis Tennessee but I wanted rockers and he was like I can't give you rockers yeah he's like you, he, I was like Gaslight Anthem has rockers some some you know and they're like Gaslight Anthem doesn't have biker fans yeah and I was like uh, I guess you know like, yeah. you just have to kind of know who you're working towards yeah. whatever but yeah that just Put it this way, Motorhead doesn't have rockers. Yes. And, yeah, and Van that could probably have rockers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, uh it's just, and I can't fault them on a, as a band person to yeah. another band. Yeah. 
I'm for, I mean, make it work. Yeah. You know, I mean, was heroes gone, man, they would come home with, I mean, five, six thousand dollars in merch money. Like that was on. I mean, you couldn't go anywhere in the nineties or not. I see Hero Gone patch or shirt. Well, that was the thing. It's like that. Those are the bands that could still sell records. Like I remember they were on the tour. We we played with them on the Nerve Damage record came out. Yeah. They sold through three thousand copies. They had pressed themselves, Man. and then they had to get another pressing on that tour. It's like. Well, you pressed it, so you get everything. Like, there's oh, no label yeah. getting anything. Well, and it's the same thing. It's like that prank 7-inch on red. I, I have it. Yeah. When Henry was born, I was trying to... I had to take off some time. So Ben did the first bi- uh, revival tour. Yeah. But I was selling a few records. I was like, eh, eh. I couldn't get any bids on the His Heroes Gone red vinyl first one. It's yeah. just funny that unless they're Japanese or there's some 12-year-old kid that in five years they're going to rediscover this 20-year-old music. It's so funny how prevalent it was. And now it's... Dormant. Well, I think it's cyclical, right? Yeah. Like, well, no, I'm saying it will come back. I come still back. have it. I'll end up selling it for two hundred dollars to somebody. Do you still? Do you ever? Do you ever get a, ch- a judge chunking? No, man. See, that's the beauty for me of the internet now. All this crazy shit that I've never heard of. I at least got to hear it. I was like, yeah. how bad was it? Yeah. You know. I love chunking. I think it. I yeah. like the way it sounds. Well, that's the thing is, I was like, this does. Somebody put up, and it never really occurred to me, and it's night and day, but it's every version. Of the first Judge Seven Inch, oh, the, because yeah, they lost the plates and they had to do a re- well, they had remaster, it, right? And then they re- well, they had the original version, yeah, and then there was the replated, yeah, and then they remastered it for CD, and then they took the remastered for CD version for some, like they've yeah fucked with it for so long, but there's like six versions, and if you listen to the first one versus the last one, it's totally different. Yeah, yeah. I remember there being one where like I remember listening to it when I got. The seven inch or something, and they're being like, "Oh, there's backing vocals here." Like Man. I just like never had heard them. because they probably make like Mix it just it out of it like. Whatever, but it's yeah. funny to hear them because you just it's over time and everything. But yeah, some of that stuff I'm like, this, I don't know what that's why I, I wish this damn downloading era didn't start, so we could have Rhino Handmade finally do that <laughs> Judge, <laughs> you know, New Yorker seven inch box. Hey, you know what? It probably happened. So what you do, Rev? Well, I mean, like, Rev, do it. Well, I'm just that's the thing. It's, I, I think y'all played it. We played. There was one of those. Fuck yeah, fucked up fest yeah. things that are L.A. or Texas. I can't remember. Fun, fun, fun. Is we, played with, we played both with you. Well, yeah. Right? I just, there's one of them where... Yeah. But it was literally... Mr. Burma was sitting up next to us. Danzig played Gorilla Biscuits. But I was like... <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Okay. And I was walking around going, this is wrong. <laughs> this is like the doors for my parents. This is 20 years later. You're not supposed to see all these bands yeah. in a field with 20, 30,000, however many people. But it was cracking me up because I was like, at some point, there will be Rhino reissues of these of, of these records. Stuff there is going to be. I'm waiting for the Mojo magazine with AF on the cover, <sighs> and then like a huge like I would. Well, you know, I, I, here's, I mean, I, it's just it's like the other day. I love the Promise Ring. Yeah, I get hammered, drunk, fall in, and it's a running joke. I saw him a hundred times. I was filthy, crusty kid, and a bunch of college kids just fucking dancing my ass off, and. The other day, I was like, man, I need to get those records back. Do you know how much those go on the inter? A fortune. I was like, what? I mean, you couldn't throw a rock in a record store and yeah. not hit them. But I guess they don't press. J Tree just doesn't do vinyl anymore. No, and I think maybe they belong to Promise Ring themselves now. Maybe they're not. I mean, I don't know. Supposedly, you can get the CDs off of J Tree. I think. Oh, and then J Tree did just do a bunch of reissues of it on vinyl. Ooh. Like, I just got an email because we're. XJ Tree recording yeah. artist fucked up, and I and it was something about their new J Tree. Well, I went online them. like a week or two ago. I ended up paying like fifty dollars for uh, the first Promise Ring LP, and I was like, "This is," but it's twenty years old. Yeah, you know, like at certain things, I don't. Well, that's, re- that's the thing. It's like I look at when I was getting buying records. First, when I was buying records in nineteen ninety six, the thought of like going back and being able, like, if I could ever find like a Sex Pistols on A and M or like you know like some crazy rare record. That's twenty years ago. That twenty years ago from now I was like, yeah, that's a promise ring. That's what, well, that's what I'm saying. It's like all day long. I got all the early DRI MDC seven yeah. inches. I'm buying them for twelve bucks at home. Yeah, because nobody cares. Yeah, but all of a sudden, promise ring on gray vinyl, split with Texas is the reason. It's seventy four dollars. There's still some stuff that just though it shocks me how it's like, well, that never went down. Like like the. Uh, Misfits. Yeah. Oh, I like, mean, every time I was like, I remember someone like this woman here, Jill Heath, who did Misfits shows, man. sold her collection in the '90s, and it was like hundreds of dollars. And I'm like, though that's crazy, but I'm like, they'll never be worth more than that. Now it's like 
thousands well, of dollars. And some isn't there is obvious. It's like the minor threat seven inches. Yeah, find one of those. Everyone's. I mean, I almost spent one hundred and twenty five dollars on one just to have it, and I was just like, I'm, I'm not going. I can't do it. You know? Did you keep? A, did you keep a lot of the stuff though back from back then? No. I got kicked out of my house and traded all my records for clothes and places to live. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Rebuild it. I've lost like this last one. I just literally since my wife left. I've started again. Just before she left, I literally was like, I don't know what to do all this stuff. And I gave all my records to Goner and was like, I don't want any money. Either give the money to Church Health Center or Alltown Skate Park. You know? And yeah. I just, basically, they wrote a check. You know? And now I'm like, I kept a hundred of the, you know, yeah, like family. Like stuff in here. Like nobody's ever going to want this old DRI records or their old whatever. But I kept the core yeah. stuff. Not yeah. for value, but more for like, for you articles of faith seven inch yeah. and uh, you know and that kind of stuff but yeah I just it was like sometimes I have to I was end up buying so many records and just never listening to them mm-hmm. that I finally you know and I just or I'd run I'd get kicked out of a house or I just the point is you could move all everything you own in the back of somebody's car except you had to go get a U-Haul to move <laughs> your records and they're the biggest pain in the ass oh and you're just like oh you know and yeah. so there's a lot. I mean, I still have most, any of the records I wanted, I have roped around and found. Yeah. Somehow it came, the first Shelter 7 Inch on Blue Yeah. came back to me as mine because that was when I, I saw, I spent a summer in Minneapolis before I moved there for a year. And it was that summer of the Libido Boys thing. The last yeah. show I saw, I met Mike Carvin, who uh, was one of the hardline kids and ended up getting in trouble. Now, he moved to Memphis for a long time, but he, it was Quicksand Shelter and Inside Out tour when they were Rev 7 Inch tour yeah yeah and that was good I watched kick that bass player in the face I watched all the straight edge kids complain about Shelter and the Incense like, yeah I was going to say was it, were you were you on board for that era of that stuff I guess I you had a Krishna I was a little, we flirted with the Krishna yeah yeah I mean yeah. with Katie before I mean Sarah turned Krishna which got Katie into Krishna which had me being Krishna and then when Katie passed Sarah took her to India burn you know like there was a whole or Seven yeah. Priya like there was a whole Everybody, <clears throat> the punk rock kids didn't want to fool with it, mm-hmm. so to speak. But the, some of the straight edge kids, it was just like, oh, this just, yes, this seems to be the next. The you know, it's, it's George Harrison and the Beatles. Like at some point, you're anti spiritualness. You're like, well, this is a religion that makes sense. Yeah. Then you get a quarter way through that book and you're like, oh, fuck <laughs> this. You know? <laughs> or, like I said, I mean, <clears throat> those poor kids were having to sell their records. You know, yeah. like for five bucks. Like, oh, here's your Project X for five bucks. Yeah. I have to get rid of everything. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I have a hundred dollars and fives. What do you have? <laughs> you know, but it was just amazing. Like, I don't like Slip or any of the other quicksand stuff. I just like the seven inch. Yeah. But the bass player, the original bass player, Shelter, was this tall, goofy guy, curly hair. I don't even think he was punk rock. Or my, I don't even know. Wasn't it guys from 76% Uncertain? Or is that just the recording lineup? If I, this. Guy didn't tell me at the okay, time, and yeah, I would—I yeah. mean, I wouldn't have known. I do like them, but I just wouldn't yeah. have been able to be like, "Oh, you're," you know. Yeah, like, yeah. But he met Ray and all them at one of the temples. Or okay, something. Yeah. So I kind of was like, maybe he just plays bass, maybe like hardcore. Could have been Greg Dan for all I know at the time, you know. Um, <laughs> but he, I had a 1975 Guild Starfire in my car that didn't lock. I was packed up leaving town the next day. I stayed for this show. Yeah, and shelters van died their battery went dead so i drove the bass player guy to the auto zone and bought them a battery i just paid for i was like fuck it i got this money you're on tour and when i came back out i freaked out because my guitar was missing and that guy had taken it put it in the van and was able to lock it he's like i didn't want your guitar to get stolen but i he didn't tell me i'm just like "Ah." he's like oh no 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 hold on but halfway home from minneapolis to memphis i was fiddling with something and under my seat Shelter 7-inch, first 7-inch on blue. Oh, he stuck that under there for you? He hit it for me. <laughs> and I have it still. Like, it has moved through so many different but, Memphis used shops. Yeah. And there's, you know. And you I, just keep buying the same record. Well, no, I, 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 I'd gotten rid of it a while when I got rid of everything, and then I finally found it. Yeah. But I have it. Like, that's one of the few I'm like. And then my friend Welsh Mark, I have uh, the first uh, Crass 7-inch um, screened, not the poster. Whoa. He grew, he's 50 plus years old. He grew up in Europe yeah. seeing all that stuff. Like he gave me the early, he's like, oh, this rudimentary PMI, you can have it. I don't like it. Oh, and that's the one thing I've always held on to. Yeah. Because reading the history of seeing it, whatever, it's not the poster. 
Yeah, it's just a, it, I've, it's like the first thousand they did or something. Yeah, like, it's like it's brown like, paper sack basically. So I was just reading about that um, in that the day the country died book. Have you seen that? I haven't. You got to get this. Cherry Red did a series of books Ooh. on UK punk uh-huh. kind of after yeah. the the gold rush. So it's like the first one I think is like. 79 to 83 nah. then 83 to 85 and they've gone right into the 90s now Ooh. but yeah that's one of those ones where I'm all like and he just had it like yeah. he, bought, he has he's different he's the one that has he has the Joy Division Flexi from NME he's got wow. he's like I saw him five times you know probably his ideal for living the 7 inch too and, oh he has my. everything wow he has every record he's ever bought unless he gave like yeah threw something down yeah and I'm like man if I had every record I ever bought I'd have to buy a new house, you know, like it would just, cause working at the record store too. Yeah. You know, it was, it was crazy. So it, um, I sold a bunch to a couple of years ago to buy one. Yeah. But, and that's where I'm trying to be like, I got laughed at. Mary came over the other day and they were all listening to records. I was pulled out some of the sober and stuff. I yeah. was pulling out random stuff, but it's like, and this is what I kept. Yeah. And they yeah. were looking through stuff and they was like, she's like, She's like, there's eight David Allen Co. records. And I'm all like, I like David Allen Co. And she's like, and this isn't like your record. This is what you kept. And I'm like, I like David Allen Co. <laughs> you know? So uh, it's like, but yeah. So it's, I don't know. I'm reading like, I, I, I did. I want, I want that cap and jack. I don't want the alphabetology. I want the real LP. Okay. And well, I, and I know they bootlegged it at one point. And so I keep, that's one of those things where I'm just like, at some point, it's going to end up somewhere. We've gotten Scott Kelly from from the podcast and people listening to it sent an Ottawa Rough Riders memorabilia for because Dad did that. Man. We got Fred Armas in the flyer of his first band, so hopefully we can get He's you the Captain Jeff. Mouth? No, he, he was, was in KGB before Trenchmouth, oh, a New York hardcore band yeah. that opened for GBH and the Crow. Uh, no, and Murphy's Law. Well, I was reading Rock something Hotel. and they were. It was some crazy thing on Instagram, like uh, Craig Finn's Instagram, and it was yeah. like, confused because he was like, "Oh, my band Trenchmouth," and I was like, "He was in Trent. I knew he, he was, was in Trenchmouth too. Who? Fred Armisen. That's what he was. I, yeah, that was the second band. I, I've seen. I got living. Like it was just like, <laughs> holy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's weird. It's like, and also, what was Craig Finn's hardcore band? Strength in Reason, is it? I don't know, but we should text him and find out. He had a. He has a sick. I have a seven inch at home, and it's his old band. Man, Damn, I wish I could remember. He, uh, he nerd like I don't realize. You know, you see certain like I didn't realize too. He's a big hardcore nerd. Yeah, and oh, he yeah. knows about raid. Like there was one time he was hammered and was just wanted. He just like raid. <laughs> you know, he just wants to talk about it. And I was just like, yeah, you know, it yeah. it is. They're one of those bands that maybe it's because the victory CD came oh, out. Fuck, they fucked that. You ever heard the original? Oh, I've got the I've got the hardline pressing. Okay, on that CD. well no, that just I I have the LP. Oh, the twelve. Yeah, I have the vinyl version of it too. Man, where who do you know who did that? Didn't Hardline Records do it? Really? That is the here's that's how Victory got the freaking masters. Oh. I found it at Goner for two dollars. Yeah. I literally looked around thinking I was getting punked. Yeah. Because I knew it was out there, but no, somebody came up to Sean at some point and was like, Hey, can we do a vinyl version of this? And he gave him them, he's like, sure, whatever, I don't care. Gave him the masters. That's how it was, I mean, Tony basically stole the masters, didn't tell the band or anybody but putting it out, remix it so all the whispering is higher up, yeah. put all the Thoreau quotes on it. And just put it out. Wow. And Steve and them were like, we're going to go up there and beat his ass. You know, and I was like, I know you're not. Yeah. Because <laughs> y'all are all grown ups now. But I think, you know, like, you're not going to get up into the office building to even beat no, his ass. No. That's not, that Tony Victory, little squeaky one that wouldn't get out of the car at Voodoo Village is not the same. No, not even score Tony anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so. Wow. I had yeah. no idea. That's a. That's it's a, like, it's just this. I mean, it says hard line. Sean didn't put it out. Nobody. It's. Because this one girl had a copy of it, and I was like, where did this come from? Yeah. And I randomly uh, found it. And then this kid... There's only a thousand of them, someone told me, too. Like, I don't even... I mean, it's... I never the, see it. Yeah. And then so this, was the CD done by Hardline Records originally? CD was done by Hardline. Okay. But then, like I said, I think he was just like... Because by that point, he was doing Pressure or whatever. It moved like... And what about that weird Vegan Reich reissue from the 90s? It's like a 10-inch, and it's got all the Rastafarian stuff oh. on it <laughs> yeah well he started that reggae man so they're yeah. all and then um, he put out a Fall Out Boy record did he really he the first Fall Out Boy AP Sean put out and that's oh, and that's he's done pretty well by that I bet he has no it um but yeah like and then his friend this kid he's a young kid he's like 22, 23 tattoos me in Memphis now Alton he's an old straightest kid a little more young yeah. he grew up he gave me a Raid shirt Raid Whoa. didn't make shirts 
Yeah, I've never seen a red shirt. I have a large. I can't even wear it because it's a large. Like I'm reducing, <laughs> just to, but it's gray. Just to fit into it, and it has the raid logo from the LP. That's and awesome. Like some lyrics on the back. Wow. But like raid never. And that's it's amazing. We would take Raiders hats and sharpie out the E and the R in the end. Make raid hats. Make raid hats. But the fact that they never made Mark made this animal rights shirt. They tried to sell on the back end R and R, but raid it's just it's mind boggling. Well, hardline bands was it not about merch, right? Like no, well, it's about it's being a band. Yeah, I mean, they true. sold demo. I mean, yeah. what hardcore band did you ever go see that they didn't screen sure. fifty shirts? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, true. it's just like looking back on it, they were just. And I want to say, I mean, the seven inch, they might have sold them at shows, but I don't. I think they pretty much just gave them. Everybody bought them from them at the house or something. Like they didn't have a merch. So was it two demos and then the seven inch? There's one demo. One demo because there seems like three sessions on the CD almost. Well, the yeah, well the CD is the two songs from the demo. Yeah, the seven inch entirety. Yeah, or I think it's, it's entirety. Yeah, I think. And then just those blood green sessions. Oh, the blood green sessions. Yeah, yeah. I love and so man, so, it's so good, it's so insane. Well, it's just you hear it. I mean, I can't hear an air raid siren without getting weird. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then, but that whole <laughs> just. Did you uh, did you ever see Earth Crisis? back when they were trying to get into Hardline? No. They, um, I had the seven inches. They didn't come down that south that much, probably till later. Yeah. And then by that point, <clears throat> once again, it was just like, ooh, these fashionable kids are, uh, like, I, like they were fashionable. Yeah. <laughs> fashionable. <laughs> you know? And it wasn't heavy. To me. It was heavy, you know, but... Yeah, it wasn't your kind of heavy. Yeah, because at that point, you were, you are like... But they were the man that I think took that raid. Oh, they totally ran with it. Yeah, like they. I mean, they're from. They're huge. Yeah, it just that was that divergent. By the time I was listening to, you know, like with the cop out or pre his hair was gone or whatever was yeah, coming out, yeah. there was like, Rawr. yeah. So for that, it was just it was poorly recorded to me. Yeah, you know, like it was just. It's funny though, because like I guess they were turned down from Hardline, right? Like that's the story that Sean. Maybe. It was like, you can't, no, you guys aren't. I mean, really, line. there's only the three. There's only the, oh, uh, yeah. Well, f- Hardball, do they count? Did they get put out on Hardball? They never, the record never came out, but it was announced. Okay. And well, then the Hardball 7 just came well, out. You know, it just fell level. apart as quick as it got yeah, together. Yeah, of course. You know. Like, uh, anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but that's the thing is, and then I guess the the reviews, because he was, I used to have the Animal Rights record that yeah. Sean did beforehand. Yeah. And he was friends with the... Uh, the guy, the guy that reviewed it for Maximum Rock and Roll, all the hardline stuff, yeah. asked for it specifically. And there was no way that it was going to get good reviews. Good review, yeah. He pretty much did a personal attack. Like, this guy was my friend. He was a liberal animal rights, crusty dreadlock kid. And now all of a sudden, it's this white, conservative, pro-life metal yeah. shit. Da, 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 da. And that's how all the reviews went. You know? And so, yeah, it just kind of just and then it just impacted on itself i think yeah. there might have been a vegan reich interview somewhere that got a little bit out of control and then the hardline fanzine always uh, had some pretty out there essays that's ryan that was <laughs> really yeah i think that was ryan um if you, did you keep hold on to any old issues of hardline mm, that's that's one of the ones that i'm like somebody in memphis i guarantee you some of those kids have i don't know fucking matt joiner he has the raid test pressing on red vinyl Whoa, they did a raid test for them on red vinyl? Oh, Actually, yeah. There's oh, four wow. of them or something. He ain't coming off of that for no matter. No, I, I, can, I can... No, I mean, that. I'm trying... I was like, literally like... <laughs> yeah, like, what can I... What do? if I kidnap your kids? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, how terrible can I get? Um, but now, like, if you dig around in some closets and some drawers and stuff, you'd be surprised what uh, the nation... I have all the Nation of Sheep stuff, which was... One night was New Wave older bands, and the next night was all the band. Like, Raid, Pure Blood, Whoa. Man With Gun. It was just... And each one has an... Um, I think it's on my Facebook page under Old Memphis Punk Used to Be Fun. Yeah. That's, if you look up that on my Facebook page, I have a whole entire thing I scanned of stuff, but it's the one way uh, cassette cover. So, oh, amazing. And then there was all the old, like Memphis used to get in fights and do uh, like weird flyers that were ended up being like questionnaires. Yeah, okay. And there was somebody, I think Todd did one that was just like, if you fucking hate the scene, da, 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 da. and then somebody did a counter one. And then I, I want to say the Chris Bonner is a rapist one was up there. Like he was in some crazy band and ended up at Columbus Fest and some girl accusing him oh, of rape. Oh yeah, I remember. She made the flyers. Yeah. Like 
he's sketchy. I'm not, I don't know. I wasn't, you know. Well, that, that was definitely this. That was kind of like when Columbus Fest became a, a different vibe. Yeah, and after, that was obviously. where. I, but I just, but I found all this old like articles, like the raid. I think there's yeah. the raid seven inch ad, yeah. but it's all on my Facebook page. Wow, I might I put it. some of that on my Instagram. I'm gonna have to peep all that. that yeah, it. Good. Um, but it was like back when it was fun, is what I called it on that folder. But it's just I found all this stuff. Well, I could go on. Forever. Oh, we were. Right. I didn't know we were still recording. We're still recording. Oh, sorry. Is that okay? Did you no, no, no. That's fine. I, okay, was, I'm I like, thought we were chatting. No. Well, believe <laughs> me, I would. Just, I just want to chat too. Yeah. So I can stop now. But Brian, thank you so much for doing this, man. Hell yeah! Please come do this again with yeah. me because this has been. Oh, I've wanted to do this so long. 